Hello everyone, and uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm not really a big Christmas person. Wasn't really raised with it, and you know, something I haven't taken to later in life, we'll put it that way. Uh, so I always give myself a little project over the Christmas like period to uh, fill in time that would have been spent with other people who were, you know, doing family stuff. And um, this time around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, put together a guide for Tabletop Simulator playing Battletech. So it's a guide both for Tabletop Simulator, but also for Battletech. Classic Battletech, to be clear. That'll be interesting, I think. And uh, I tried to do it as a playing a game uh, versus myself, and I think it actually went amusingly but a lot of things got lost and it became very rambly because i was kind of waiting for something to happen in the game naturally without dealing with uh well straight up what was gonna happen like like instead of dealing with the the rules as they came so so to create a game of well anything you load up Tabletop Simulator, which is on sale, and a link is in the description below. You can do single player hot seat for swapping over. I haven't tried the hot seat yet. Uh, multiplayer and single player. So let's go single player. Mostly because I've tried nothing that really would involve a hot seat scenario, like Battletech's a game where you can see everything. So you can see that I have uh, various workshop items here. Uh, this is kind of my unsorted thing. So some Carcardon dice, some colored dice uh marble dice so basically just various different types of dice and then some battletech map there and risk 20 to 1080 so what we're going to do is we're going to low uh and then i have my battletech here my maps and some reference manuals there as well and this is all kind of stuff that'll come into play the battletech accessories is where i get a lot of the battletech stuff from the battletech record sheets is where i get the mechs from my mech models uh here these are both useful actually i i like the way this one's set up more than this one but um this one also has um mech models uh which are a little bit better than these ones so i've been kind of migrating towards this package and then there's battletech dice two different sets one's kind of rounded one's just straight up square and has more uh, more dice in general uh, this one's a lot smaller it's only got the six different dice that you can see there uh probably gonna get rid of this one and this this one sh this one should be gone go 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 away um that one keeps coming back that's the one problem with this game is sometimes the stuff doesn't really delete itself or unsubscribe so anyways that would be how you can kind of start this up now i i've i've built um something here in my saved and load which is the uh the basic riverside base setup so this takes the riverside map that you can get um from the workshop and it comes with actually a fair amount of stuff i, uh, I rate it highly actually is a good kind of beginner map because a lot of like a lot of the items you're gonna want are actually already on it like it's already got this best summary which is super super handy for referencing rules uh but I've also added a bunch of stuff to it, like the dice, obviously. There's the Battletech dice. These dice come into play if you want to do um, sort of a house rule speed up uh, version of the game, which we'll talk about. These are run dice, walk dice, jump dice, and then over here we have just basic status indicators. Uh, this will probably get larger. I'm looking for some status indicators for some things that I don't currently have. Um, so we got the damage component, mech prone, engine shutdown, torso twist, blown off arm, blown off leg. The blown off leg looks kind of amusing. Um, pilot check, heat scale, pilot unconscious, immobile, spotter, that kind of thing. Um, all of that will mean nothing to you, but hopefully by the end of this playlist or video, depending on how long it gets, uh, I will be able to d uh, have brought it through. So what is Battletech? Uh, Battletech is a futuristically based universe where humanity has gone out to the stars and instead of finding aliens to threaten them, us and unify us, we've actually become divided based on stupid things, basically, and there's a constant war going on. 
somewhere, basically. Um, there are various war vehicles that we can associate in real life. Like, for example, there are fighter planes, there are tanks, there are APCs, there are missile trucks, uh, there are basically what amount to helicopters uh, called VTOLs. And the big thing, though, is that there are mechs in this universe. These anywhere from 20 to 100 ton war machines that basically dominate the battle in a way similar to like knights of old almost if we're being completely honest that, 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 that would be the thing i would compare it to and that's kind of the appeal of battle tech is you get to fight with these and these mechs are highly customizable and you can do a lot of different things with them you can build your own mechs in this game i'm not going to show you how to do that here but there's a thing so the first thing I think everyone needs to be introduced to is kind of the basic characteristics of the mech. So you'll see there are no mechs here. No mechs, no nothing. Okay, how do we fix that? We go to games, we go to workshop, and we find our mech record sheets. So for example, this one here is my record sheet source. I click expand. If you double click on it, it will load this and deload what you have, so don't do that. But if you click expand, you'll see basically all the components within it. Now this one's divvied up into um, these packages that uh, will allow us to select a class and a faction. There are two factions, the Inner Sphere and the Clans. Clan technology is a little bit more advanced and I recommend staying away from it at the start, but it definitely spices the game up when you go into that later on. So I'm going to pull out four sacks here, which are the introductory mechs. Because the thing is, is with the non-introductory mechs, there are weapons I don't have the rules for, though I probably could explain. But also best to kind of keep it to a somewhat minimum to mm -hmm. start with. Uh, well, not minimum, but you know, I hope you know what I mean. So I've picked a couple of mechs here that I think will allow me to basically explain everything we are going to need to do so first up is the awesome 8q there are different variants of each mech there's the 8q uh, and the highlander 733c there we go that is you and that's all for the assaults and then in the heavy mech side of things i want a grasshopper Really, any of the grasshoppers will do, but I am specifically kind of interested in the 5H for this, for the purposes of this. And from the medium mech pile, there they are. We are going to grab a Blackjack BJ-1. Sometimes it can be very slow on the load up, so uh, apologies. And then finally, we'll get a light mech, two light mechs actually, a spider and a fire starter. I'll let them all load up. That'll speed things up a little bit. Okay, so spider, I want the 5V if I could. Thank you. And a fire starter, I want the H. There it is. Okay. So there are the example mech sheets that I'm going to be going through. Although it seems like I might be missing one. Did one get put back into the sack somewhere? Nope. They're all here. I think. Highlander. Grasshopper. Spider. Oh, the blackjack is missing. Okay, hang on. Let me, let me grab the blackjack again. It got put back in here. That can also sometimes happen. If you hover things too close to a sack, the sack uh, gobbles them up. <laughs> okay. So let's start off with the blackjack here. So this record sheet tells you everything you need to know to play the game with the mech. It doesn't get too deep into the lore or anything. That can add a quality of life to the game, I guess. But it's not strictly required. 
So what we have here is the mech data over here. You know, the mech data includes how heavy it is. It's a 45 ton mech. What faction it belongs to, it's inner sphere. What year it went into production, 2771. And this is the, the tech data further on. You don't need to worry about that too much. Suffice it to say, what you'll do is you'll pick a year that the combat you're playing exists in. And any mech that exists up until that point is fair game. Anything beyond, excuse me, anything beyond that is something that you wouldn't have access to yet because it's not in production yet. Uh, it could be not even invented yet. So that's kind of important. Although some people will just play a free for all. Doesn't really matter. Just pick what mechs you like. And that works too. Second thing we have here is the movement points. This is how many hexes it can move. So you can notice that the map is divided into hexes here. Each hex represents one point, but there are some exceptions and I'll get into that with the movement. So the blackjack can walk four, it can run six, or it can jump with its jump jets four. Walking is the most economical in terms of heat usage. We'll talk about heat in detail in a bit, as well as being good for firing because you're jostling the mech less. You're able to aim your shots better. Running more heat, less able to hit, and jump, jumping has the most heat and the most impact to your ability to shoot. So you pick your movement type based on what you want to do and what situation the mech is in. Below that we have the weapons and equipment inventory. Now this blackjack is armed with four medium lasers and two auto cannon twos. Weapons break down into four basic type well three three basic types really although there's some interesting stuff if you go deeper into the game you have energy based weapons which are lasers and ppcs now these are these have the advantage of being of not needing ammo frankly so they're most they're the most weight efficient weapon in the game but they're not heat efficient so you can see like for example the medium laser has three heat, that's what the HT stands for, and does five damage. The auto cannon two generates only one heat, granted only two damage, but that's a two damage per heat versus three divided by five would be uh, one and two third. So not a huge, huge difference, but it's still there. And then there are missiles, which we'll get into later on. So ballistic weapons like the auto cannon, heat efficient, but require ammo. Energy weapons, weight efficient, require no ammo, but are heat inefficient. Each weapon has three different ranges, short, medium, and long. The further away you get, the more difficult it is to get a hit. So you can see the auto cannons have great range. They can hit up to 24 hexes whereas the medium lasers are limited to nine hexes. The location is provided here. So right torso, left torso, right arm, left arm. There's HD, which would be head. There's le LL, left leg, and RL, right leg. And that's what it boils down to. And then you have your ammunition uh, capacity. You also have the cost and C bills of the mech. Um, C bills are kind of irrelevant because you tend to use this other number here, battle value, to kind of balance the forces. The idea being if you field a 2,000 battle point force and the other team does the same, you have a relatively equal fight. So the battle value is pretty key. You have handy little thing here. This is if you fire all your weapons and what is called an alpha strike, you will generate 14 heat and you're capable of dissipating 11 heat. We'll talk about the relationship in heat a little bit more as we go down. Just kind of following the sheet here in the flow. The warrior data is here. Now this can be changed. If you pay additional BV, you can upgrade the gunnery skill and the piloting skill of the mech, but by default, the gunnery skill is four and the pilot skill is five. We'll talk about what those mean in more detail in a bit. We also have hits taken and consciousness. So basically the deal is there are certain things that can happen that injure your mech warrior and then he has to take a consciousness check and again don't worry if you're a little bit lost 
we will go deeper into that. This is just the intro. A lot of this, this is kind of the thing, is a lot of this will probably make a lot more sense as we go through. You have a diagram here of your armor, and that's simple. You need to peel the armor off of an opposing mech to kill it. And then there's the internal structure diagram, which is once you're through the armor, you're into the structure, the actual working parts of the mech. That's when you can really do a lot of damage to your opponent. Then you have a diagram here of the mech, where everything is. So for example, this is the engine powering the mech. It's in the center torso. You can see that the AC2 ammo is as well. There's a medium laser in each left and right torso, along with two heat sinks. And then the auto cannons are in the arms, and the jump jets are in the legs, uh, for the most part. There might be another jump jet around here somewhere. Nope, just the four. Okay. And the foot actuator, a leg actuators, hips, and so on. The joints that allow the mech to move. You have a heat scale here. This, uh, where you see the uh, the stars, this equals a penalty. So as you're firing, moving, etc., your mech is getting hotter. And then the heat sinks allow you to bleed off some of that heat. So let's say this blackjack stood still and generated no heat from moving but fired all of its weapons. It would dissipate 11 heat of the 14 created, which means it would take three heat points, which is fine. There's no penalty for three heat points. It's only when you hit to five that, it's a, that it becomes a problem. And it only really becomes a problem around 10. Um, here you can see how many heat sinks you have. Heat sinks come in double or single. Singles bleed off one unit of heat. Doubles bleed off two. Pretty simple. They're the same weight for some reason, which is a bit weird, but the double heat sinks do take up more room. So maybe using the air for cooling purposes. I don't really know how that particular part of the tech would work. And as heat sinks get destroyed, you can mark them off here. And I'll do a kind of a, a demonstration shot at some point. And like I said, there's the heat, there's the heat effects. So that is pretty much all you need to know about this. Um, there's also rear armor, for the record, for the torso portion. So if you get hit in the back, it will start taking out rear armor instead of front armor. And rear armor, as you can see, is very thin. Like it's 15, 15, and 18 versus 6, 6, and 9. So uh, half the center armor and then even less than half the side torso armor. So it's not great. You don't want to get hit in the back. So, the reason I pulled out other stuff is so I could show off some other stuff. This is the fire starter. I grabbed the wrong one. This is the K. I wanted the H. Because uh, the H has mini machine guns. That being said, I don't think there's much to explain about machine guns. Machine guns are the ultimate in heat efficiency. They have infinite damage per heat unit because they generate no heat. Um, that's their advantage. They're very short range. They're the same range profile as the flamer here. And... I don't really have a ton else to say about them. Um, you know, they're they're nice, but they do relatively little damage. I want to say two damage. And they have very little range. So, there you go. You can see the large laser here and a small laser as well. Let's talk about the flamers here, because this is why I brought this mech. Flamers can do damage, as you can see, two damage. Or they can generate two heat in the opposing mech. So, if the opposing mech is starting to cook and be a problem, you can use flamethrowers to kind of push it even further into the pot. Um, I could have talked about minimum range with the blackjack, but I'll talk about it with a different mech. That's about all that we can see here. This is a 35 ton light mech. It's a fairly tough light mech. You can see the total armor points, by the way, up here. Uh, if you're kind of just looking for a, a hot reference, basically. Um, and the, yeah, the rest of this we'll talk about more in detail. So let's see here. What's the next mech? This is just an example of a, a typical light scout mech. Um, very few weaponry, but a lot of movement. Eight walking, 12 running, eight jumping. Like, that's a lot. Uh, 30 tonner, this is a spider. It's a pretty good, uh, it's pretty good bang for your buck. Because it can, it can really make things very weird. Although it's... It will die if it gets hit, <laughs> um, in general. 
So this is the Grasshopper 5H. So this is one that I wanted to to point out, like the heat problems. Although it actually it actually is good dissipation. Um, but you can see that like it it's mainly energy based, and that adds up to a lot of heat. And that's the downside of it. The again the upside is the the weight efficiency. It doesn't have any armor or it doesn't have any ammo, which is helpful. This is a heavy mech at 70 tons. It also has an LRM-5. Missiles. Let's talk about missiles. Now, missiles have the interesting problem of they require to roll on what is called the cluster table. And I'll go through this more deeply with a shooting portion of the video, which will probably be video three on this playlist. I think it's going to be a playlist because it's taking me like 20 minutes just to get through the intro. Um... So we'll cover that in more detail, but that's something that definitely you need to consider. And then they also, the LRMs and certain other weapons have what is called a minimum range. This is the hexes that the weapons lose effectiveness. Uh, again, I'll cover this more in the shooting video, but what that means is that where most guns want you to be as close as possible to them, there is such a thing as being too close where you've undercut the effectiveness of the weapon. It can still hit. Uh, initially, I thought that the minimum range meant that you couldn't shoot that close. Turns out you can. There's just a penalty that has to be worked out. And again, we'll go through that in more detail. Um, so this is the Highlander 733C. This is a 90 ton big boy like i said they go up to 100 tons that's not the biggest one and you'll notice that as you get bigger they generally can't move as well that's a trade-off uh bigger you get you get more firepower more survivability but less mobility so it's yeah you know, for those who play world of tanks it's the standard uh, armor triangle mobility firepower survivability you want a good combination of those and you're forced to make it work out well the uh the auto cannon 20 is a massively hard-hitting weapon. Rather short range, but you can see it does 20 damage for 7 heat. Like, keep that in mind that, like, a medium laser is 3 heat for 5 damage. This is 4 times the damage for, like, a little bit over 2 times the heat. Um, that being said, the ammo is heavy. You can see it only carries 10 rounds of it. So, generally speaking, AC-20, but, but an AC-20 can turn the game around. Uh, here's the second type of missile, the SRM. Short-range missile, long-range missile, fairly easy to remember. Short-range missile has limited range, but has no minimum range, and does more damage. Two uh, per missile, whereas it's one per missile for the LRMs. And uh, I wouldn't say they're necessarily more heat efficient. The SRM is, is admittedly, a, it's admittedly a weapon that I don't, really love if i'm being completely honest but it is a possible eight damage for four heat or pardon me 12 damage for four heat so three damage per heat expended eh, it's not bad but there's a lot of luck involved in it and then the last type of weapon that i'm really going to talk about is here on this awesome 8q which is the ppc ppc is massively long range it is a particle projectile cannon. It does a lot of damage, but it causes a lot of heat. You can see there, 10 heat for 10 damage. Oh boy, but no ammo, long range. It can be very, very powerful. So that's about all for that. So let's talk about the game, shall we? So you show up at the board, you guys pick the map, your opponent has picked his force, you picked your force, they're hopefully close in composite or close in value, uh, but different in composition, suited to your temperament and the way you play. There is no one way to build a lance. By the way, a lance is a group of four mechs, a star is a group of five mechs, so the, just terminology that kind of is where the grouping tends to be. Four and four fight would be very, very common. You examine the map, and 
what you do is you would roll for initiative. Now this happens before every turn. A roll for initiative is really simple. Grab two dice. I like to use the this uh, this dice tray here, but you don't have to. Highlight them both with just a click, drag, and drop. And to roll them, you hit R. And then you total them up, you roll a nine in that case. You can also do like the, the shake. Although, I've yet to really master the shake for a proper dice roll. There. Six. Um, just use the R. It's so much easier. Um, but anyways, the higher rolling player on 2d6 wins initiative and goes second. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. But by winning initiative, you get to react to what the other player is doing. And having that final say is very, very important. And we'll talk about that more later. Last thing we're going to talk about in this video is deployment. So you've lost initiative. You get to deploy the first mech of the game. You can deploy up to three hexes away from your border, your table side. Same for the other guy. So you deploy, he deploys, you deploy, he deploys. This is if you lost. Obviously reverse it if you won. Until everything is on the map and then turn one of the game begins. And we'll talk about the sequence of play there in the next video. Hope that this was informative and that by the end of this, you have the ability to play Battletech.